Welcome to the Nancy Stevens Arts and Star Show, where you can expect to be entertained, amused, and excited by my amazing guests, anyone who is anyone in the arts and style world. And a warm welcome to the isolation interview with Lauren Page, a young a new artist bringing with her unique jazz-inspired pop, um, pop sound influenced by real-life experiences and the music and artists who have shaped her upbringing. Quite a mouthful. Welcome to my show, Lauren. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be a part of this. I know it's it's I'm so pleased because just to get let's give a bit of context in terms yeah. of how we know each other. So Lauren and I used to work together many years ago and um kind of I didn't really I didn't she didn't really need to be taken under my wing, but I was kind of her work mum. Oh, it was amazing. <laughs> it was it was so lovely. And we just we just bonded. We're both complete musical theatre freaks and our love of performing well the performing art anything to do with the arts that's kind of what bonded us really wasn't it you were like the glamorous mum ray of sunshine that just we used to walk into the office it was amazing <laughs> oh thank you about that but uh, it just seems like another lifetime ago because you know we've both oh, moved on and done so many different things since then it's just it's, yeah. it, you know it, it was it was a fun place to work but um yeah yeah. wasn't to either of us was <laughs> no not not a lot I don't think a lot of work got done there was a lot of chat and a lot of yeah. it was it was it was it, you know it was good times and uh yeah you know, it was um it was just lovely watching you blossom and I've just seen you over the last three years I think since we last saw each other just seeing yeah. you emerge onto the music scene and you know become oh. this, this this little star which I always knew you had it in you oh so well you. done well Thank done you nice to see how in those three years actually when you look back at like where we were working what we were doing like how much has changed I think that's such a nice thing to be able to see that kind of journey from there isn't it it is it is am I too dark I'm gonna just pop the light on tell me what you think is that better yeah that's a little bit better yeah yeah, yeah. Just, the sun has just decided to I know vacate vacate yes so so yes yeah, so let's go back to the beginning so um a bit of a dance brat I suppose you know you love dancing um, from two and a half years old um, um, MK Dance Centre, Mara Tiffin, um, yeah. Juliet Ratnidge and now Arts One so you've kind of done all the big local um, <laughs> dance performing arts um, schools yeah. what was that like growing up or I guess you didn't know any differently I never knew any different really so when I went to dance at two and a half that was more my mum trying to have like an hour of peace and me go and oh. skip my energy off around the room yeah. um and then yeah for as long as I can remember I was probably going to about five dance classes a week every night after school I'd be getting changed in the car from school my mum driving me to to dance and it was it was just my life really um it's a bit cliche to say but literally that I didn't know any different um but I think it was like a massive, a massive part of kind of what I'm doing now, really, because when I left school and I wasn't doing as much dance, I was like craving that performing again. And I think hence why I got a little bit more into singing, really, because I just was was craving that um, performing aspect of life, really, I think. But um, but yeah, I did everything from tap, modern, ballet, contemporary, street, you name it. I did it. <laughs> so, so yeah, so it was great because I was able to be involved in a lot of, um, a lot of shows. So we did, um, Whistle Down the Wind, Seven Brides, Seven Brothers, Joseph. Seven Brides. That I know. Love, that. Love that it. Was, that was one of my favourites actually. Yeah. That was really fun. And um, the dancing in that is intense, isn't it? I mean, that's a yeah. hectic, that big, that big money number where they're dancing over the logs and putting, that yeah. is a lot of technique, isn't yeah. it? Definitely. Yeah. I mean, the rehearsals that, I mean, obviously I was younger when I was doing it, but still a lot of the rehearsals took up like a lot of time because there was a lot of things to, to master and grasp. But, but yeah, it was, I really enjoyed doing it. And I think when I, when I sort of stopped doing um, as much performing dance wise, I realized how much I missed it really. Um, but yeah, very lucky to have, to have been a part of that in my life, really. I was, I was kind of, you know, performing was always in your DNA. And it's, I mean, you've done Aladdin and Evita, Never Forget, yeah. Joseph, yeah. you know. So a real um, array of, of musical theatre and all with different um, demands on your voice and, and movement and everything like that. If you had to name a favourite show then that you did, what would you say that would be? 
Oh. Was that uh, really hard? It's got to be Aladdin, I think, because okay. yeah, that was Panto that we did for about two months. Yeah. That was the one um, that Bradley Walsh was in. So it was quite a big hit, I think, that one when we did it. Yeah. But it was intense. Like it was, I'm pretty, I think I pretty much had two months off school, um, which was quite good back in the day. Um, wow. But yeah, that just, it was just amazing to be with that, that amount of people performing. You know, they became family because literally we would spend day and night pretty much together on the performance. Um, and I think we probably did about 40 to 50 shows over that time two teams worth of um performers but but yeah I think that's always one that kind of sticks in my head as a bit of a highlight and I don't think people realize the the rigors of panto I mean panto is such hard work I mean it's it's a discipline that will set you up for life um and you know it it feels so I'm getting many notifications on my oh I guess (laughs) Just go away for God's sake. Um, so uh, what was I going to say? Discombobulated now. Um, Panto, oh yes. So I think, you know, obviously talking about the fact that, you know, this is an isolation interview and we're in lockdown now and it feels like we've been here since Jesus was a boy, you know, it's like it's hard to envisage what, how the arts are going to recover from this. And, you know, for you as a performer, um, but the, for those who, you know, are in the theatre and when the theatres went dark, how how has that been for you for someone who is it it's so important have you are you really missing it because i know i'm really i feel like i just i feel so bereft when i think about all the shows i've missed or i'm missing especially for you because you're used to reviewing them on like Mm -hmm. a weekly basis aren't you Mm -hmm. but yeah same for me i think i think there was um i think it was last month i had about four gigs that i missed and it was just it was just awful really because you you write these new songs that you want to share with people and you rehearse for so long and then obviously when you don't get to do it um it's a bit it's a bit weird um so last month I was supposed to play the Great Escape Festival in Brighton um and so that's like a massive shame but but then you've just got to remember that I suppose everyone's feeling the same and yeah Yeah. especially people performing in theatres like the months and years that they spend rehearsing you know during all their training their dance training their vocal training like I just can't even begin to imagine how they're feeling really no Um, absolutely not I can record things at home and put them up and write some new stuff so I'm still keeping that flow going um but yeah for people performing on on stages I I do really feel for and and obviously uh, you've been super productive with this lock. I mean, we've got lots to talk about, but it's super productive with this lockdown time because, as you say, you can't just pop to the studio and just you know record <laughs> something. But you've obviously you know you've been writing a lot, and and you know so have you, has it has it been beneficial in many ways, giving you this time it to has. just sit back and go mm, okay. Yeah, I think because before lockdown, I'm just very busy with work and um, with performing and things. So I think actually it's been nice because I've been able to think right I've got nothing else to do so I might as well sit and get pen to paper and get writing stuff um so before lockdown I was pretty set on releasing an EP kind of within a couple of months I've been meaning to put out a project for ages Mm -hmm. um so I managed to record two of the songs before lockdown um but then during this time I've actually written a lot more songs that I think are actually going to change the whole shape of the EP now for the better um So yeah, so it's kind of taken a little bit of a different turn because I've been teaching myself a little bit of music production. I've been picking up my guitar. I've been getting back on the piano, um, all things that I probably wouldn't have had time to do beforehand. So yeah, it has been good. I've been trying to stay productive, writing, practicing, getting on the piano, things like that. So yeah, definitely, definitely has been some positive things come from it. Yeah, I think a lot of people, you know, like you, you know, creators ended up finding that you're incredibly, become incredibly resourceful because you're having to do, as I say, yeah. you, know, you want to utilize this time. And I mean, I've, I've, I mean, I'm, I'm someone like you, I'm just always doing stuff. And I've, I've learned so much about, not only about myself, but, you know, my surroundings, enjoying walking and like you, you know, you love, like me, you love yoga, I'm doing yes. so much yoga and it's just like... Hey, my- <laughs> I just love it. I'm completely zen now, and I'm like, oh, going back to the real world. I'm gonna to have to remember my technique because I'm gonna yeah. be stressed, you know. Um, yeah. 
but just teaching yourself stuff because there's no one else to ask. You've just got to crack on and do it. So um, I think for a lot of people, it's been a, a you know a learning period, hasn't it? Definitely, because I've been too used to popping down the road to the producer saying, oh, can you do this for me? Oh, can you do this for me? Whereas now I haven't been able to do that, really. So I've just thought well, I'm just going to have to learn it myself and see how I get on. But, um, but yeah, it's nice to see everyone kind of making things and being very creative, people that might not have been so creative before as well. I think that's really nice. No, it, it is. And um, your inspiration, um, you cite Nora Jones, Amy Winehouse and Lana Del Rey as your kind of biggest influences. Would you yeah. say, obviously, that's because of the kind of music that you do? Describe your musical style to, to, to us. And, you know, I mean, those are your influences now. What, what were your early influences? That's a double question there, sorry. That's okay. Um, so my, my style of singing, I think, is, is that kind of like jazz, soul. That's all the kind of stuff, like soul music I absolutely love. And I think very it does. Very Yeah, very chill. Who are you? Like, yeah, very, yeah, it is very me. Um, and I think but I've still kind of got that sort of pop kind of sort of edge. Um, so I think it's kind of a combination of just different music influ musical influences that I like. Um, but in terms of kind of early days, I mean, so Nora Jones. So the first song that I ever performed like live um, on a stage was Nora Jones don't know why and I think I was about 12 um, oh. and I got asked to sing at a jazz bar in um, Oxford and I had a singing teacher at the time and she kept saying to me oh I can kind of you've got this jazz kind of feel about your voice and at the time being 12 I was like no like I just want to listen to pop you know I, yes. I wasn't really yeah. um, so she arranged this jazz band to be at this um this bar in um, Oxford so I got there and was kind of not really knowing what to expect and I absolutely loved it like the musicians the whole the whole kind of that like you say that chilled jazz kind of vibe I was just in awe of these people really and I think since then that's really been the music that I've liked really si since being 12 which I think is a bit strange but um, and then grown I, up, isn't it? Yeah, so that's very grown, mature. Well, but you've always been—you've always had a wise head on young shoulders, though, haven't you? You've always been. Yeah, I think very so. mature, and you know, I mean, it's hard to believe that you're only 21 and you've packed all this in. You know, it feels like, <laughs> you know, it feels like you've been doing this forever, and you're so accomplished already and so proficient. Oh, thank you. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah, people get that a lot. People saying a wise head, but. Sometimes I don't think so. I have the odd blonde moment and I'm like, mm, <laughs> not sure. But, well, I, but, I do and I, I do and I'm 53. Well, I just blame that on the <laughs> menopause. I'm just having a menopause moment. <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, so, yeah, so obviously you were set to release your EP um, later this year. Um, how does that look in terms of time or are you just literally having to wait and see how things pan out for the industry? Yeah, I'm not really giving a time because the thing is I was hoping to have kind of like a big launch event for it and I think ideally I'd still like to do that but I think it's kind of going to have to see how the next couple of months pan out but mm. I suppose on the flip side it's a good time to release music as well because everyone is sat at home um, yeah. wanting the next thing to come out so I haven't kind of got a date in mind yeah. um, but definitely before the end of the year it will be out whether we are allowed out or not, it will be it will be available um, because I just am so desperate to put out a project that I'm kind of really proud of, and I'm like, right, this is exactly um, my sound. This is exactly who I who I am now, um, and where I'm where I'm trying to be really. So I'm just really desperate to kind of have that out and um, be available for people to listen to. Really, oh, so. I can't, can't I can't wait and. Um... Obviously, you've had a couple of music music releases already. A um, single called Velvet yeah. Rose, um, which is from your upcoming EP. Um, yes. Where does your inspiration to write come from? I mean, because you know, a lot of a lot of singer songwriters usually it's born out of extreme heartache. And you know, you've got a lovely life, lovely parents, lovely Ollie. You know, you've got, so yeah. where do you get your? Where does that angst come from? If, because you're such a chill, happy person, where does that come yeah. from? I think. Do you know what? I, I love to read and I get really um, like inspired about reading about other people, really. Um, and 
you know, a lot of my friends have been through quite a lot of things. So I think that plays a part in the writing as well. Um, but I think like when I, I don't get down very often, really, I try and stay as positive as I can. But I think when I do get those days where I feel, you know, frustrated and sad, I write it down. And I just yeah. kind of really channel that when I am feeling a bit low, because I think writing a happy song is a lot harder than writing a, yeah. a sad song feel yeah. so much emotion when you feel sad and and frustrated so I think it's those times that I actually really focus my attention a bit more like I say getting pen to paper um but it's not always about me I sometimes write songs that are kind of I might have read about a character in a book or I might have kind of um been reading about someone else like an article or story or a friend situation that I've kind of felt quite strongly about or been yeah. involved it's, it's kind of a range of things but I think it's definitely something that if you kind of experience something it tends to be easier to write about I think definitely. so um, yeah that's kind of it does it's a bit of a vague answer I'm sorry no, but no, no, that's, that's, from, that's, that's, that's absolutely stuff. fine and um let's talk about the art scene in Milton Keynes um yeah. very important to both of us and I know you're uh, tell us a bit about your um, involvement with Unit 9 and people like Jamie Simpson. And, you know, there's, there's such an amazing cultural hub in this amazing yeah. city of ours that people just don't realise. Definitely. So, yeah, so Unit 9. Um, so I recorded um, actually another song that's going to be on my EP um, with a guy called Alfie, um, who is a producer at Unit 9. Um, and he's amazing. Like, he's really um, up for, you know, the whole collective of Milton Keynes um and it's very much like oh I know this person you should get in touch with this person so that's really nice yeah to be everybody yeah everybody knows everybody else don't they yeah yeah it's a bit like that um but also um there's a guy called Alex um who is one of my other producers he goes under the name of Vibe Chemistry um and he's put me in touch with a lot of people um that I'm now working with and it's all just very much like people pushing each other forward mm -hmm. and um so I've, I've been lucky enough to feature on a couple of um his his people that he produces for his artists um a guy called dale may um another guy called forbes um so i featured on forbes's album which came out last week um and then dale may is set to release an ep he is incredible um so i met him through alex um and also like the venue, so like MK11, yeah. Sunset Lounge, they all host um, like jam nights, open mic nights. And that's just like a community, community feel, everyone, you know, cheering each other on, which is really nice. Um, so, so supportive at Milton Keynes. I think it, it's a bit underrated, I think, unless you're in the yeah. circle, kind of looked, looked over a little bit, but it is amazing. Definitely, I mean, which is why I do what I do because I want to you know, yeah. promote local artists and, you know, we have this thriving arts community and, as you say, it's very much overlooked. So, you know, any anything to help, you know, be the voice of, um, you know, ha happy to help. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so speaking about local, um, you're now at Arts One. So Arts yeah. One, you know, is a very dear to my heart in terms of, I'm um, just speaking really loudly because it's absolutely chundering down outside no. huge amount yeah it's ridiculous yeah, yeah. Huge, like literally just pouring so i'm um, so yeah so arts one is um in, in my opinion the the performing arts um place to go to milton keynes in terms of yeah. the pastoral care the level of expertise everything about it is just amazing and um they gave benji a chance when he was in a really bad place and yeah. um, it's benji my son and um, you know they they gave him a chart, they gave him a, a, an opportunity which changed his life forever. And you know, and I, and I will forever be grateful to James Grimsey for for giving Benji that platform to then go on, spend time at Arts One, and then get offers from every single audition he went to. So, are you enjoying your time there? Yeah. So um, I kind of joined there just before again the lockdown situation, but I got in touch with one of my old friends who I used to dance with at Myra Tiffin, um, and I was like, oh, I really want to go back to dance, but I don't know where to go for kind of the best adult classes because we're now yeah. classed as adults, which is strange. <laughs> but um, but yeah, because I I tend to find that a lot of the dance classes for adults tend to be a bit more fitness yes. focused rather than the kind of tech that we yeah. were looking. Um, but yeah, so I 
got in touch with Arts One and said kind of what's the situation with the with the adult classes and they were amazing they were literally like come and try all of them yeah. here's two weeks free to go and just try everything and yeah. we were like great so we literally tried everything and we were like right we're gonna we're gonna just start and basically do them all and then yeah. lockdown happened which was which was really unfortunate um but I know they've been doing um on demand classes and yeah. live classes which we've been doing um so yeah it's just been so good because the teachers the people the even the studios are really nice um I just think really it's nice. good for people who maybe have come out of dance um and are a little bit older kind of too old for the children's classes um but are still at that high level of like focus and technique and yes, wanting to yeah. learn really good routines it's like the perfect it's perfect amazing routine. isn't it yeah amazing. so and you've done I mean, obviously a, a seasoned performer on radio shows now who performing live on bbc introducing beds hearts and butts radio and obviously yeah. a regular performer in the london scene so performing is obviously coming naturally to you is this something you want to do now for the rest of your life in terms of like give up your day job and do this living oh yeah if I could give up my day job and do it I would yeah. Yeah. I'm just at that point where obviously you have to earn money um and I enjoy my job um so I work in project management so I do really enjoy what I do um but yeah I think music and performing would always be a burning passion that I just have to do whether it be full-time or whether it just be when I can um but yeah obviously if I got offered the chance to do to just do that I definitely would. Oh, I'm sure that'll happen. So, um, <laughs> well, let's hear a little bit of, um, you know, how how amazing your voices are. I mean, I love it. It's mellifluous. It's chilled. It's just velvety. It's just. It's such an. E I know. I hate the term easy listening, but it is. It's very chill. Oh, um, can you give us a little bit of an excerpt of one of your compositions, please? I mean, <laughs> tell us. Tell us afterwards. Um, you know why why this particular song this just okay. make a, a verse and a chorus is that right yeah so this one's i'll sing a little bit of velvet rose okay don't linger you're only running up the fine i said we're over so why are you running back in my mind I told you I don't need to be saved. I'm not a goddamn princess calling your name. Like a sin of velvet rose, I was never your Monroe. We're over. I'm sober. Like a sin of velvet rose, I was never your Monroe. We're over. I'm so now. Oh, it's just a bit weird doing it. I can tell. I know. Oh, it's love. It's just. It's just so. Yeah, you've just got such a lovely tone. You're so such a natural performer. You're so relaxed. I mean, the the idea of performing to me makes me feel physically ill. I mean, giving me oh. a microphone and a camera and I'll talk for the cow. You know, the cows come home. But ask me to sing. You know, and I. You're just so relaxed. Do you ever get nervous? Yeah, I think, to be honest, I suffered with confidence for a really long time, actually, which I think is why I didn't really go down the performing route kind of wow. when I was at school. Yeah. Um, coming out of school and just kind of like putting myself completely out of my comfort zone, you know, just rocking up to open mics, going and doing little acoustic gigs with my friend. Um, and it really took a bit of like, telling myself come on you just got to do it mm -hmm. um but yeah I definitely still get nervous like um last year I had a show in Shoreditch which was um the company who organized it they kind of said okay you're going to be the headline like this uh, this event is kind of around you and your and your band and I was literally there like oh. Oh my <laughs> but, um, God. I had a couple of gins before I went on as you do <laughs> um but but yeah I think as, once I get going first song down then I'm like right I'm into this, yeah. But yeah, yeah, it does take, it does, but bless him, Ollie is like always there with me before gigs going, come on, you've got this, you're going to be fine. Like, I owe so much of what I'm doing now to him. I really believe that because he's so encouraging. 
he will come to any little open mic that I'm doing or like the biggest show I'm doing like he will he's literally been there for every single thing so yeah Ollie is, Ollie is the most the world's most amazing boyfriend and I had the privilege of watching these two lovebirds fall in love at work and it was just so lovely and three oh. years, three years later you're you know you're still together and happy and it's it's a it's a lovely story because you're su both such lovely lovely young people you really oh, really are so happy for you oh, so so what um obviously lockdown could continue for a while you're just going to continue practicing yoga and dancing and writing and you know and then going to do you know say the big ep will be out when it's out yeah so me and ollie are moving in together um so yeah so i'll be doing a little house move um in about three weeks so that will probably take up a little bit of time but yeah i have already said to ollie that i'm having one of the rooms as a music room yeah. um so yes yeah, so i'll just be continue writing getting a little bit better at producing music um i've got a couple of covers that i'm going to record and just put up because i want to kind of get my youtube channel a little bit more um <laughs> involved which is yeah i know it's a bit of a challenge but work. oh my yeah. god yeah I, I mean, at, the begin, at the beginning of lockdown i thought oh yeah i'll set up a youtube channel honest to god it's full, it's a full-time job yeah. and, i mean total it's respect like, to youtubers it's like how that is their full-time job because content it takes a long time <laughs> yeah and, uh, and if you and if you're like me you're a perfectionist oh. and, I, I, and i'll video something like i don't like that vlog and i'll do yeah. it again and I, like 10 times i'll do it oh my yeah, yeah. I, like a strand of hair and i'll be like yeah. well i can't put that up because yeah. that no. just yeah it's, it is a mission but then when you get something up and people like it then it's all worthwhile isn't it <gasps> no it so. is it is so um tell us how people can find out about you and follow you on the socials please yes so on instagram um it's my at is at it's lauren page music um i've got a website which is www.laurenpagemusic.com um i'm on facebook so i've got a facebook for my music um which is lauren page music um and um i think that's it youtube also is lauren page music um so, so yeah consistent so lauren page just type it in you'll find just you yeah you'll find me somewhere <laughs> yeah oh it's been uh, honestly it's been such a pleasure to chat and, and I'd say oh, watch yeah. your progress over the last few years and 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 yeah I always knew I always knew that you were going to make you be, be, become a little star and I just I'm gonna I look forward to watch your star ascend when we get out of this um Aww. you know whatever that's hell is that lock lockdown seems to be going on forever um, yeah. but you've used you've used the time wisely and you know that's you know that's that's a such a positive so yeah i look forward to seeing you know we'll watch the space for the ep and yes. lauren yeah. page just definitely want to watch super talented local girl and um yeah thank you so much for being a guest on on you know on the show thank you for listening to the nancy stevens arts and style show passionate about all things arts and style Catch us on all major platforms and YouTube, Nancy Stevens Arts and Style Show.